Hey everyone, Cursed Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted with a really, really fun and interesting deck here. You may be seeing Rocco as our commander, but that's actually incorrect. This deck is a hidden commander deck, and the commander is Kosai Penitent Warlord. So this deck comes to us by Monstrosity, who says, what do you think of three color Kosai? The goal is to tutor up the pieces you're missing, get Kosai geared up to be unblockable, and smash face with toughness. Now, before we get started and go through why our commander is hidden, I would like to remind everyone that the this deck list is in the video description below. And especially with a deck like this, where it is tricky to figure out the exact setup when your commander is within your 99, I would recommend opening it up, taking a look for yourself, looking at what you like, what you don't like, and see if we agree on changes or ideas. And if you think of anything I haven't thought of, please put a comment below so that we can work on making this deck the best version it can be. So who is Kosai and why are they our secret of commander? Well, Kosai is a 0 5 for 3 Ogre Samurai, mono green that says, when Kosai is enchanted, equipped, and has a plus one, plus one counter on it, this is and, not or, Kosai then gains the ability that whenever, uh, whenever they deal damage to an opponent, you draw that many cards, according to the damage dealt, and then each other opponent takes that much damage. Now, the idea is this is, this is kind of a Voltron commander, where we our main win condition is our commander. We're going to load them up full of equipment and auras and swing in. Something that puts Kosai beyond many uh, Voltron commanders is Kosai requires more hoops to jump through, but in exchange, you have a higher payoff. So the payoff being when Kosai is fully equipped or just equipped at all, enchanted, and has a plus one, plus one counter, it's safe to say Kosai will generally be hitting for I would say upwards of eight damage, which represents 24 damage across the across all your opponents. But much more importantly, it represents drawing eight cards, which I think is very, very strong. So how do we get this going? Oh, before we do that, actually, we should ask the question of why then is Kosai not our commander? If Kosai already has a lot of hoops to jump through, why are we adding an extra hoop? Well, this time it's pretty straightforward. Rocco, using Rocco as our commander, and if you're unfamiliar with Rocco, Rocco, when you cast Rocco and you pay X, if he then, if he resolves and enters the battlefield, he will search up a creature with X mana and put them onto the battlefield. And this is particularly useful because we can use it just to tutor Kosai directly into play. So, why are we using Rocco? Well, Straightforwardly, red and white. When we add Rocco, we gain two additional colors for our strategy. And though red is the lesser of the two colors, white is definitely needed here. And I really like its inclusion. So already off to a great start. I think this deck, this deck really impresses me. And if we go down to the curve, we can see it also matches a curve I really like. Very high in one mana spells and then going down slowly, with 9 being Blasphemous Act, and 6 being Goto Bandit Warlord, one of each. I really like that. I like that the regular curve ends at 4. That's beautiful. I think this deck also plays a lot of really good 1 mana drops, uh, so I'm very happy on the curve. I am generally very, very happy with this deck. I think this is a particularly strong deck, and I really like how it's been put together. I think it really shows the strength of an archetype like this by having a lot of strength in many different directions. Namely, the thing I really want to commend the uh, deck builder on doing is making Kosai a toughness matters commander, which changes um, which changes our our math from uh, Kosai being a zero five to Kosai being a a five five which is really, really nice. With that in mind, 
what 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 can we say here and what can we change? Well, a few things come to mind. The first thing is it's very clear that we need to get obviously cosi on the field, and we've got tutors in here to help us. Eladomri's call, worldly tutor, namely are our main ways, but Rocco is our other main way of getting our commander. And with that in mind, I'm looking at our ramp. So are we playing enough ramp? I would say pretty close. We have burgeoning to play more lands. We have exploration to play more lands. We have utopia sprawl and wild growth to enchant our lands. And we have a collection of one mana doors. Do I want to add any mana beyond that? Uh, Jorga's Tree Speaker. I don't like that. I don't like that as much as the others. I don't like we have to sink mana into it. Uh, where we can play just another uh, one mana elf. There's many to pick from. Um, there's the snow elf that taps for colorless, I don't think is in here. Um, and I think there is also a new one, which is our um, hobbit from the new set, who taps for uh, legend uh, mana for legendary creatures and makes those creatures can't be countered. I would prefer that, but I feel like that is a pretty straightforward Inclusion there. Tap target creature. Perfect. So, do I want to add to this collection? I kind of do. I think, like, with the equipment that we have, which is probably where most of my attention is going to go to, is the equipment. Uh, we could definitely use Sword of the Animus or the new uh, living weapon version, Bitter Torn, which does, I believe, pretty much the same thing, uh, both of which will put lands tapped into play. I, look, I like those as additions because we already have many ways to tutor equipment. So this gives us just another direction to ramp it. As a reminder, outside of, uh, outside of, sorry, outside of tutoring or naturally playing our commander Kosai, we need six mana to cast Rocco and to get Kosai into play. Now, this isn't so bad because you don't have to rush into this, namely using cards like uh, Lightning Greaves or uh, Swiftfoot Boots, both of which to give haste. In order to play them later, you can play Kosai later through Rocco and equip immediately and start attacking. Now, as a reminder, we do need to also enchant. And when I look at auras that we have at one mana that can enchant our commander, I believe Dryad's Favor is our only, only one, which I feel like we could play Rancor without much cost. Rancor, of course, making up for a bit of unblockability, though, of course, the power doesn't really make as much sense here. Do we have another aura for one green that gives trample, I wonder? Commander, one aura and trample. None really. Okay, I would just go with Rancor because if your commander is killed, it goes into the graveyard and you get Rancor back. Just the trample is nice. And if you don't have the ability to uh, give give your commander toughness matters, that's fine. You just still get to, you still get to at least draw a few cards if you have the other pieces. So if we wanna go in one turn and we don't have like Arden, which is a really nice choice here, having the ability to have another one mana aura wouldn't hurt, I don't think. In addition, looking at the, um, looking at our choices here, I find it kind of hard to believe that Bone Savers is the best option here. Don't get me wrong, it's particularly strong. I really like that it like hydrifies whoever is uh, equipped with it. And what you can do is you can attach it to some of your one ones, you know, early on in the game, attack a few times and then switch it over. But that's three to equip. That's a lot. And I'm trying to think there has to be something that's a little more reasonable in this slot to put plus one, plus one counters on. 
Like you're already playing Blade of the Pulse, uh, Blood Chief, but uh, let's try equipment and then say, how does the language go? Put to, put counter. Let's try that. Let's go find mana value and see if we have any other reasonable option. Mm, looking through, Lion Sash, the counters go onto the Lion Sash. That doesn't work. Uh, Ring of Evas Isles for blue. Ring of Calonia catches my eye because it gives trample, but I really don't particularly like the fact you have to wait to your upkeep to get it. And then, wow, we're already at Bone Savers. That's a. It's interesting. Sword of Hours says whenever a creature attacks, equip creature attacks, get a plus one, plus one. And then when it deals combat damage. Okay, you can double the plus. That's fine. I think I think I would consider Sword of Hours. I recognize that it's not as explosive, but it's just easier to equip. And I do think that's relevant. I know it's not as fun. Um, hmm. That's black, that's out of the... Uh... Great Sword of Tear is another one, but the fact that it uses colored mana is kind of, makes it a little trickier. I'd be, I'd be okay. Either Great Sword of Tear or Sword of Hours. This one costs one less to equip and it taps down a defender. Yeah, if you can make this work, I would use probably Great Sword of uh, Tear. An armory of Iras, Arolas, Ar Ar Arolas, uh, would be like just just the most vanilla version, though it doesn't cost less than seven, a sort of hours to equip, so I'm not inclined to use it. I just personally think it might be a little better because um, at a certain point, those extra that extra four damage doesn't doesn't matter. Um, and so, with that in mind. I don't know. I don't I don't think it's really worth using the bone savers. They do add up really quickly, but I also notice you don't have additional combat step options, which we'll talk about in a bit. All right. The next thing I want to talk about, oh, I actually I should I should bookend that by saying I think you generally would it wouldn't hurt to put one or two more equipment anyways. Like I said before, you have a lot of ways to tutor them and equipment are sturdier than enchantments, so I understand why you have less than them. But they're also more valuable in a deck like this because they uh, they can be equipped to your mana dorks amongst other creatures, other support creatures that you have, which makes them, in my opinion, just a little more worthwhile. All right. Now, what was the next thing I was going to say? It was it was on the tip of my tongue and it's kind of disappeared. I suppose we'll get back to it. Let's let's go ahead and talk about a little more utility cards, I think. I think a deck like this doesn't hurt to have Ewit. I feel like Ewit is noticeably missing. Eternal Witness has just so much versatility in this kind of deck that I particularly wonder why it's not here. You're in your one-off cards, your instants, and to an extent your sorceries. Are incredibly powerful so I'm a little curious why we don't have eternal witness in there to just rebuy one of those cards um, in addition its ability to then pick up some equipment and, be, uh, and join the fight is pretty strong the next question I have is why no mother of runes or its cousin giver of runes if you're playing Skrell I'm very curious why we're not playing those two. Because these two are considerably stronger than Skrell, because they don't require mana cost. They give, uh, sorry, mana to activate. They also give protection, which is better than Hexproof. Now, I do recognize to an extent there is a reason why, and that is that if you give Kosai protection from green or white, you will knock off the aura that's on them. 
To which I'm going to say, eh, is that really the worst thing? It's not like we're going to be taking out cards that uh, would protect it. Like for card, any card you take out for giver of the runes, giver of runes, I think, let's just say for the extent, for the sake of argument, we can take out a forgotten agent, let's say, and we put in giver of runes. As long as we haven't taken out a protection spell, such as snakeskin veil, or we haven't gotten rid of benevolent blessing, we're not really losing the fact, like, we're not losing anything in our deck that it wasn't already going to protect. So when your opponent casts Swords to Plowshares on your on your coast side that has Spirit Mantle on it, uh, actually, that's a bad, uh, <laughs> bad example because then you can't target it with Giver. So let's say, let's use a green one. Let's say Ordal of Ny Ny Nylea is on your coast side and they use Beast Within on your commander. And you say, well, I got to use Giver of Runes to give it protection from green, but then I'm losing the aura. I'm going to suggest that's kind of okay. That's not the worst thing in the world, right? You're losing an aura, yes, but if you didn't have any other protection spell to begin with, you didn't have Hexproof or Indestructibility, well, you'd be losing the ordeal anyways. So I think I think the choice to run Giver or mother of runes is pretty free it is it is just up to the cards that you're going to pull out which is kind of difficult at this level i will admit because <laughs> because you do have a lot of really strong cards stone skin stone skin is one of the cards that i see and i'm like uh i don't i don't know if i love stone skin Stone skin is half of a combo. Its ability to add 10 power when you have a toughness deals damage card is really, really good. But without that, it doesn't do anything. And also, if this isn't on Kosai, it's not very good. Like you can play Hwatli and you can cast it onto your Birds of Paradise, swing in for 10, or block someone. Uh, with for 10 damage, like that's pretty good, but I don't know to what extent, um, I don't know to what extent you're going to feel very good about that exchange. Like, it's just, it might as well be a removal spell if you wanted to use it that way, and if you want to do 10 damage with it, how often do you need to just do 10 damage commander? You need to do 30 to 40 generally. And I don't know. It doesn't really. It feels like it feels like the equivalent of um, is it Towers Reach? There's a two mana card that gives plus five defense uh, toughness to all your creatures, and I don't particularly like that either. Even in Duran decks and the like. So I don't know. I'm I'm a little little soft on this one. Um, trying to think of anything else. Let's go back to additional combat steps. Additional combat. So which one am I thinking of? Because we can't play an infinite amount. Goto is particularly good, obviously, because uh, it's already in the deck because of its ability to be the samurai clause actually matters here. But I think the seize the day is just it's just fine here. I think it's definitely good enough. By being able to attack, untap Kosai and attack again, that represents a tremendous gain in resources and a tremendous amount of damage. So having just, just seized the day, I think, is enough. If you wanted a different one, perhaps... There's one that it's an aura, but if I remember correctly, it will then sacrifice the creature attached to it, which we don't want. Artifact equipment. Hexplake Wallbreaker. Whenever a equipped creature attacks, if it's the first combat, you get another one guaranteed, and it's equipment. That one's close. Um, it is a lot of mana. It's five to play, four to equip, both of which that needs a color. But uh, it's not the worst. So I would be, there we go. Breath of Fury is the one where you have to sacrifice 
each time, and I don't want that here, obviously. Okay. So with that in mind, I would suggest definitely maybe only seize the day, just because it represents a tremendous, like, it swings you even further, and it's it's can be used again from the graveyard, and it's not a rush to do so. Now, I am putting the same scrutiny on it now with Stone Skin, where if you don't have your commander out and you don't have the ability to attack, Seize the Day, much like Stone Skin, gets considerably worse. So I don't know. I think it would be worth trying, at least. I think it's a particularly strong card. Uh, Branching Evolution also feels a little strange here. I think it is it is an enabler card, and you are running a very, very tight deck where you have so many hoops to jump through and um, so much to cover that having an enabler that doesn't even work with the majority of your deck, well, I say majority, let's say two-thirds of your game plan, Maybe even less, considering your game plan is to get Kosai and then the three steps, the three hoops you have to jump through. Branching Evolution only really interacts with one of the hoops. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't particularly like it. I think Branching Evolution can be cut pretty easily. I'm just going to look one more time. Triumph the Hordes is really interesting to me. Do we need this? I get the trample. The trample is what sticks out. The infect is obviously that if you hit one person with it, you then defeat your other opponents. But we have grafted F uh, exoskeleton for that. And grafting exoskeleton, yeah, has a bit more of a cost because if they destroy the exoskeleton, they get to destroy your commander, which is very good. But you can tutor for the exoskeleton. Whereas Triumph of the Hordes, you have to draw into it naturally. I don't know if you need two copies. I really, really like Grafted Exoskeleton here. And Triumph of the Hordes really feels like an afterthought, like the second copy. And I'm fairly certain there isn't. They still haven't put another one. Like, is I'm pretty sure that's the only option. What do we say? Is it gain? Gets, has in fact. Say equipment. Don't think. I don't think there is an enchantment, but we'll try that next. Just that one. And nothing in our colors, unfortunately. Okay. Even then, I think Grafted Exoskeleton is superior, and I prefer that one. It checks off one of our boxes. It makes our commander extra lethal. It allows them to poison the entire table. I just prefer the exoskeleton here. So I'm fine removing Triumph of the Hordes. But otherwise, I think that's where my thoughts come. Oh, there is one more. I've, I've completely forgotten. I really like Dryad's Favor. And it gives Forest Walk. So I ask you, where is Yamit Yavimaya? And maybe it's just it was a budget concern or something along the lines. Uh, where is our land? There it is. Cradle of Growth. Okay, it's about 10 bucks. So this makes all of our lands forests. The entire idea of your deck is to make your commander unblockable. And Dryad's Favor makes everything forests. So it does read as unblockable as opposed to having to attack the player with forest. Now, since you only have to attack a player, I do understand how it's already, you know, unblockable because you only need to attack one of them. So the chances of one of your opponents having green are is rather high. That being said, why take the risk? Yavamaya fixes your mana. It is a great card in a deck like this. It replaces just a forest, which you're already running eleven of. Perfect addition here. Okay, I think that was I think that was my last little thought. Uh, I really like this deck. I think this is a really, really cool idea. I think this is the best version of a secret commander deck that I've seen in a very long time. And I, this is by far the best uh, Voltron commander style deck. 
that I've seen in a really long time. So I'm very impressed and I really like it. It's one of the decks that's sent to me that makes me makes me want to build it. And I don't I don't know if I can give a better compliment than that. So if you make your next draft, I would love to see it. I think this deck is very close to being completed. After this, the next few steps would be things like fetch lands to just fix up the mana. And I think that would be like a final draft of a deck of this level. Anything to make it stronger would, after this, fundamentally change the deck. So unless you were interested in that, which we could go through, I think this deck is pretty close to completion. If you want to send me the next draft, you know there's a form in the YouTube description, video description below. Or if you want to send me any deck, please fill out the form in the video description and I'd love to take a look. I'd also appreciate if you would like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube thing. Our channel is particularly new, and though I am pumping videos out, I would like the channel to grow so that we can see more decks, help more people, and make our way to 10,000. All right, I love the deck, and good luck changing it.